Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nikki LaRose and today we're doing a date night inspired glam. If you like watching makeup tutorials like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Let's get right into foundation. I'll be using the Fenty Ease Drop Foundation in number nine. Taking my foundation on a painter's palette, I'll be dipping in with my foundation brush and I'll be starting in the center of my face. So I'm really buffing this foundation all over my skin, but in the areas that I want a little more coverage, I'm gonna dip back into that foundation, and instead of buffing that product on, I'm gonna stipple it onto my skin where I need more coverage. So for me, that's gonna be around my nose and a little bit more under my eye, so that way when I go in with my concealer, I use a lot less. And then whatever's left over in my brush, which is a really small amount, I'm just gonna gently graze over my eyelids just to help cancel any pigmentation and to even out my eyelids before I go in with my eyeshadow primer. Okay, so now that's nice and blended, I'm gonna start with my eyeshadow. Grabbing one of my all-time favorites, this is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in the color Macadamia. Even though I used a little bit of that foundation to even out my eyelids, I still need a little more coverage and a little more brightening before I go in with my eyeshadow. So that's why I'm going in with my concealer now. And I'm just gonna dot this across my eyelid and then taking a more dense, kind of a fluffy brush and just packing that on. And then blending it out. doesn't have to be super technical. I'm not trying to carve out my brow with this concealer like I typically do. I'm just trying to get more of a brightened effect. And then making sure I just buff out the edges and I really bring it out towards my temple so it's well blended and I bring it down towards my tear duct as well. Using one of my favorite translucent powders, this one's from One Size. I'll be using this much later to set my under eye concealer, but for now, I'll be setting my eyelids before I go in with my eyeshadow. And with a fluffy brush, I'm just gonna tap this on my eyelid to set my concealer. Okay, eyelids are prepped, now we're ready to do some eyeshadow. I'll be using the Baked Browns palette. This is one of my all-time favorite palettes. This actually never leaves my makeup kit. It's such a staple for me. And I'll be taking the Zueva 228 crease brush and dipping into this first medium brown shade. With all my eyeshadow looks, I really start with the crease color and then I build my look from there. So by using a nice, natural, neutral tone like the one I have right now, it's just a great foundation for the rest of my eye makeup look.
And then whatever's left over on my blending brush, I'm gonna sweep it all across towards my tear duct and towards the side of my nose, but really focusing the most of that color on the outer corner of my eye. Next, I'm taking the same blending brush and dipping it into the color right next to it, which is more of like a warm, almost like a pinky brown. And I'm really just layering this on top of that first brown shade. Next, I'll be applying a shimmer to my eyelid, just something that's really pretty and romantic, and that way when the light hits you a certain way, it just really pops and looks beautiful. I'll be using the shade Silk Road from NARS, actually Silk Road 2, with a small flat brush, this one's from MAC, and I'll be packing this on my eyelid. But before this hits my eyelid, I'll be wetting it very lightly with the Milk Hydro Grip Set and Refresh Spray. And what this is gonna do is just make it more metallic-y, even more like poppy, and it's gonna help with fallout as well. This color is beautiful dry, but wet, it's even more magical. One more layer.
Next, I'm applying the Bedroom Black Eyeliner from Charlotte Tilbury. It wouldn't be a makeup tutorial of mine if I did do somewhat of a little bit of a cat eye, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do right now. Before this has a chance to dry down, I'm gonna go in right away and blend it out and really get that shape that I want before it dries down. Focusing on looking straight ahead in my mirror, I'm gonna to start to blend that out. Okay, now once the shape is pretty much where I want it to be, I'm gonna move on to this eye. Going back with my blending brush. For my next color, I'll be using this gorgeous palette from Huda Beauty. This one is the Wild Chameleon and just using this beautiful like deep eggplant shade. Same brush that I used to blend out my black eyeliner. So I'll be using this shade directly on top of my black pencil. Okay, my eyeliner is complete. Now I'm gonna go in with a really small Q-tip, just clean it up and sharpen the edge just a little bit more. Before I do my mascara, I'll be curling my lashes. I'm 
I'll be using the Buxom Cosmetics Blackest Black Mascara. I'll be doing mascara first, and then I'm gonna add a couple individual lashes where I feel like I need them. When I'm applying mascara, I really like to get to the root of my lashes, wiggle it a couple times, and then pull it straight up. That'll help to maintain that curl that I put in with my lash curler, and also help just define them, give them more separation. It really makes a big difference. So I'm gonna get in there, and you'll see I'm gonna wiggle it across, and then pull it straight up. and then just kind of fan out the edges using the tip of the mascara wand. This is where you can kind of get in there and get more like detailed work. I'm almost like picking apart my lashes with the tip of this wand. For some extra drama and flirty vibes, I'm gonna add a couple individuals more towards the end and just to kind of add a little more like of a wispy look. My favorite individual lashes are from a professional brand called Monda Studio, which are sold in LA and online. They're a little hard to find links for these, but the Ardell individuals are just, just as good and very similar, so I'll link those instead. If you ever wonder why I don't link these, it's because I can never find um, a link for them. So I'll be applying these with the Duo Brush On Lash Adhesive. So when I apply individuals, I just take a couple from the pack, put them on the top of my hand, and I take them one by one and then apply them. Now that our lashes are on, I'm gonna tight line with that same black eyeliner from Charlotte Tilbury, just on the top lash line. So I'm gonna go back to that little blending brush I used earlier for our eyeliner, and I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna just gently drag a little bit of that black eyeliner I used in my waterline. I'm gonna kind of bring it just out towards my tear duct, just a little bit. I'm gonna go back into that deep burgundy shade. Just a little bit. And basically repeat the same look I have on my outer wing and then kind of make a little mini wing on the inner part. It's okay if it doesn't look perfect right away because you can easily go in and clean it up just like we did with our outer wing. Now I'm gonna go in with a Q-tip and just kind of fine tune it. So when I'm dragging it out, I wanna make sure that I'm not dragging that liner down, which would make my eyes look kinda of sad. I, rather than that, I'm gonna just kinda of drag it straight across. Going back to my NARS Macadamia Concealer, I'm gonna to start to finish my under eye now. And then whatever's left over on my brush, I'm just gonna use that to 
really lightly highlight the center of my forehead. A little bit on my chin. So I really like to press my concealer in under my eye. That helps to maintain that coverage. Rather than going in like really buffing it all around, you really lose the coverage when you work that way. So for me, like I've mentioned before, I need the most coverage under my eye, like as you probably can see. So when I'm applying it and when I'm blending it, I'm not trying to blend it to the point where it's gone. I'm trying to just press it in to really lock in that coverage and maintain it. And at the same time, it will blend it too. It's just a different technique of blending it. Before I set my under eye concealer, I'm going to start to work on the rest of my face, like warming up my complexion. I'll be using one of my favorite products ever. This is the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate in Intensity 1. I'll be applying it with a Real Techniques contour brush. I love this little brush. So what I like to do first is get a decent amount on my brush, and then I'll take it and I'll work that into the top of my hand. And this just really helps the blending process. It helps to speed it up. So for me personally, and for a lot of my clients, I really like to go a lot higher with my contour products than you typically would. Like typically, you'd find the hollow of your cheek, which is right here. And that's where you'd start your contour. That's fine, but typically when you do start as low as that spot, you end up taking it even lower as you're blending it. So I just like to start a little bit higher than you typically would naturally. And then as I blend it, Inevitably, it's gonna go down a little bit further than I want it to, but it's not gonna go down too far, if that makes sense. So, starting a little bit higher than you typically would. And that way, when you're applying this to, the overall effect isn't just a contour, it's more like a lifted and sculpted effect. And then making sure I get it really close to my hairline so you don't see any gap or you know, any, any blank spots where it's not blended. And I'm going back to the top of my hand and I'm just going straight across my forehead, just trying to give myself a little more warmth and a healthy amount of color. And when you're doing your forehead, just something to keep in mind is you want to think where the sun would actually hit you and that's the highest points of your forehead only. So don't bring it past this point. Keep it nice and high. And then whatever's left over on my brush and on the top of my hand, I'm just gonna take it just lightly underneath my jaw. I don't think that I need contour here. It's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to tie the whole look in. And sometimes this is all you need to do just to give yourself more of a cohesive look to your makeup. So don't forget your jawline. Next up, I'm gonna highlight using one of my favorites. This is the Pillow Talk Beauty Light Wand. This is a liquid highlighter and it comes with a sponge applicator. This one is mine personally, so I'm gonna use this to directly apply it to my skin. And this gives such a gorgeous glow. I am obsessed with these products. I have so many in my makeup kit. Same brush I used to contour. I'm gonna take this and just pat that product in. So when you're using this product, I really recommend that instead of blending it really aggressively, you're just gonna tap it into the skin. When you're pressing this product into your skin, you're maintaining that beautiful, glowy effect not diluting it by blending it too much. I'm gonna go back in and layer it just a little bit more. Because you wanna be extra glowy for date night. 
and I'm just stippling it and pressing it up towards my temple. And then whatever's left over, I'm gonna start to just hit that highest point at the side of my forehead. And I'll show you why in a second. And then hit the side of your chin. So you can see when you get all these beautiful high points of the face, when you get that profile shot, it's just so gorgeous. It really picks up on your features. It gives you that beautiful glow and it just really accentuates, like I said, the high points of your face, which are so gorgeous. Okay, now that my highlighter is on and it's blended, I'm gonna finally go in and set my under eye concealer. Dipping back into that one size loose powder that I used earlier on my eyeshadow base, I'll be taking a fluffy powder puff, this one's from NARS. So I'm taking a good size amount and I'm gonna work that in the palm of my hand, really working it into my puff. But before I actually apply this to my under eye, I'm gonna make sure there's no creasing that happened since we took a long pause in between. And since I'm using this on such a small area and this is a larger, fluffier powder puff, I'm gonna make sure I squeeze it and kind of fold it in half. That way I can really get in there and make sure I'm setting it properly. And in order to really get in there, you have to make some crazy faces and look up towards the sky. So really quickly, I just wanna point out what a huge difference it makes powdering my under eye versus not powdering my under eye. For me, I think it takes 10 years off of my, my age. I think it looks so much smoother. It really helps to blur fine lines that we have, especially under our eye. It gives it more of an airbrushed finish. And I think I look way more well rested on this eye versus this eye. So don't be afraid to set your under eye. Don't be afraid of putting powder under your eye. I think a lot of people think that it's gonna settle into their fine lines, but if you apply it properly, like I just showed with this technique, it's a game changer. And you can see I'm applying that just above where that highlighter is. So we're not disrupting that highlighter. It's still totally intact. We didn't powder it down. So that's why you really want to squeeze this and make sure it's nice and small so you can get in there and not get the rest of your makeup that you don't want to powder. Taking a little bit more, I'm going to start to hit my T-zone because we want glow, but we don't want an overwhelming amount of glow. So I'm going to hit the center of my forehead. and just above my brow. Get the side of my nose. If you have oilier skin, make sure you definitely are setting your T-zone, especially for a date night. You know, you wanna be glowy, but you don't wanna be like a disco ball of shine. and then just a teeny bit in the center of my chin. Not the side where we have the glow, just the center. And then I always go back and hit my expression lines. Because just like under our eye, this powder is gonna have a smoothing effect and it's gonna help to smooth that area. I'm gonna go back to my highlighter one more time. I forgot to highlight one spot and that's my favorite spot, which is right here. Just gonna tap that on. 
and then with my fingertip, I'm just gonna press it down. And you'll notice I'm leaving the very center of my nose without the highlighter. And that way it's nice and it's balanced and it's not too much. Going back to my baked browns palette and that first brown shade that we use on the crease, I'm gonna repeat those first two colors actually on my bottom lash line, just like I always do to tie in the rest of the look. And I'm gonna go back with that small blending brush and that darker burgundy shade. I just kind of tuck this into my bottom lash line. To finish up my eye makeup and just to add a little extra pop, I talk about these all the time. I'm obsessed with these. It's the Fenty Beauty Rose Rave. This is the All Over Diamond Balm Highlighter. I'll be using this on the center of my eyelid just to add a little more sparkle and fun. Using my fingertip, my favorite tool for this kind of product, I'm gonna get a good amount on there and then I'm just gonna look straight ahead. The sparkle that this gives off is just, it's like nothing else. Now that our lashes are totally dry, I'm gonna go in with one more coat of the Buxom Mascara on the top and the bottom this time. You can't forget bottom mascara for a date night look. It just adds such a sultry, sexy look to any eye makeup. Let's move on to lips. I'll be using the Huda Beauty Lip Contour in Pinky Brown. It's a great neutral, just like it says, it's a pinky brown. It's spot on. So you'll notice when I'm filling in my lips, I love to go just straight across my cupid's bow. That actually gives me the look of a fuller upper lip, which I really like. I think it looks really pretty. So rather than following my actual cupid's bow and making it sharp and more angular, I don't like that look on myself personally. So that's why I just go straight across and I almost fill in that hollow of my cupid's bow to give my upper lip more of a rounded look. I'll be using a liquid lipstick for our date night theme just because I think it's more fitting, you know, rather than like putting a glossy lipstick on that could potentially get on your date. I'm gonna skip that and do a liquid matte formula. This is one of my favorite liquid matte formulas. This is from Dose of Colors, and it's the color Nude Chica. I'm gonna take the applicator and just squeeze off a little bit of the lipstick.
Now I'm gonna take my fingertip and dab on more of that lipstick. Last but not least, I'm gonna add just a little bit of powder blush. I kind of debated on not applying blush at all for this look because I love that the focus is really on the eyes. The eyes are strong and they're more sexy and sultry. And the lip is kind of a focus as well. So by throwing a blush in there, it's kind of like too many cooks in the kitchen. But this blush in particular is so neutral. It kind of goes with anything. It's really nice and natural. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this blush to my cheeks. To set my glam and to make sure that everything stays in place throughout my entire date night, I'll be grabbing the same Milk Hydro Grip Set and Refresh Setting Spray. So here's my finished look. This is my date night glam. I think it's soft, it's sexy, it's sultry. It's got all the things you want for a date night, including a lot of glow and like a smoky eye. But it's not just good for a date night. You can use this for so many different occasions, including a wedding. This would be a beautiful bridal look, or if you're a wedding guest, I think this is beautiful as well. Or if you're just attending a nighttime event, definitely recommend trying this look out. If you love makeup, don't forget to follow me on Instagram as well. I'm at Makeup by Nikki LaRose. And if you like this makeup look, give it a big thumbs up. Leave me a comment if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys next time.